What's up guys, my name's Stu, and today we're looking at some of the must-have rewards out of Star Trek Online's recruitment events. There's a lot of good stuff to pick up from the recruitment events, but honestly, there's so much that it can be kind of overwhelming, and most of it really just amounts to just a pile of marks or EC or dilithium or something like that. And while it would be easy to just say, well, just get it all, and frankly, you probably should because that's, you know, it's just free stuff sitting there on the table, but this video is meant to kind of give you an idea of where to focus your efforts initially. We'll start with the recruitment event because as of this recording, this one's coming up next, so we'll start here. One of the first rewards I would focus on is getting to uh, this one in the specializations. This requires you to max out the Command, Intel, Pilot, and Temporal Operative specializations. Doing so, we will grant you this reward, which is the superior versions of the Starship traits that you get from those specializations. That's Command Frequency, Predictive Algorithms, Pedal to the Metal, and Nonlinear Progression. Unlocking this reward will upgrade all four of those traits to their superior versions, making them more effective in whatever situation they need to be in. Now, honestly, these traits really aren't that great, uh, even their superior versions. But if you are a free to play player, you're probably kind of, you know, hard pressed for finding uh, Starship traits that you actually like. So having the superior versions of these free Starship traits, definitely not a bad thing to have. Next up, I would focus on getting one of your R&D schools just to level one. That's it, just level one. And that will grant you this reward, which will give you a rare version of one of the Aegis R&D specialist duty officers. This will allow you to craft the old Aegis set. Now, again, not the most impressive set in this current day of the game, but it's not, not bad gear. And plus, the Aegis set has some really cool visuals that you might find um, just cool to have. So you know, worth having. Plus, they also sell decently well on the exchange, so if you're wanting to get into crafting stuff for the sake of selling it, you're going to want this duty officer. And the fact that you can get them so soon, the fact that, you know, because you only have to get one of your R&D schools to level one, is an easy get. Of course, you won't be able to craft any of the Aegis set at level one, so that's kind of redundant. But yeah, you'll, you'll get them ahead of time. And I'm pretty sure this one unlocks on your whole account, so even if you have another character uh, with those uh, schools leveled up, so that'll work there. Next is from the episodes category. Now, for this one, you're just going to want to do all the episodes listed here because when you get halfway through them, you get another free starship trait. This one is called Critical Systems. This is a really nice budget trait that is good for buffing your crit chance and crit severity. And when you complete all of these missions all the way through the uh, Yesterday's War arc, then you get the improved version of Critical Systems. But yeah, those traits I was talking about earlier, they're they're OK, but this one, this is actually a good budget trait to have. So I would definitely work toward completing these episodes. Next one is to help out with your Admiralty. And this is another one where you're just going to want to do this whole section. Once you get to level 10 on your Federation Klingon and Romulan Admiralty campaigns, you get a bunch of rewards. Most of them is just uh, single use Admiralty cards and pass tokens. Uh, and a little bit of dilithium, but the big thing you get from this tier is that you also get a t permanent 20% boost to all of your uh, Admiral Admiralty campaign experience on all of your characters. So if you want to uh, increase the rate of that at which you're leveling up your Admiralty on all of your characters, that's the way to do it. Admiralty is a really great way of earning experience, and while at the point that you unlock Admiralty, um, it's really not going to help you with actually leveling up your character because you're already going to be at like level 50 something when you unlock that. But uh, keep in mind, after you hit level 65, every time you level up, you actually gain a specialization point. So Admiralty is actually going to be kind of helpful in leveling up your specializations. So the faster you're getting through that, the faster you're going to get some of those uh, specialization points. The next one is from the Reputations. This is another one that is actually going to take you a while because it requires you to max out one of your Reputations to Tier 6. Fortunately, it's just the one Reputation, and it can be any one of them. But once you get one of them to Tier 6, you will be able to claim the reward, which is a free Experimental Ship Upgrade token. Now, this T6X token will only unlock on this one character, but keep in mind the way Tier 6X tokens work is when you apply them to a ship, it will make that ship T6X on any character you have it on. So while this is a single character reward, the effect of the reward is going to affect your whole account. OK, this next one is from the duty officers, and it's another one where you're going to have to complete the whole thing. But when you reach commendation rank four in any uh, uh, in any six of the duty officer divisions, you will earn a special duty officer, a gold temporal operative, which uh, I can find him here. 
Here he is, uh, Temporal Agent Barrett. He is, he's kind of nice when you're leveling because uh, while you have him equipped, he will increase all expertise and experience points you get by 5%. So it's gonna help if you're leveling a little bit. Not gonna be super useful for end game stuff, but while you're leveling a character, definitely gonna be something nice to have because it's just that much more XP you didn't have from before. Plus having a gold duty officer, this thing is gonna be really nice for getting duty officer missions completed. And the last of what I would call the essential rewards from the Temporal Recruitment event is available from the uh, the probes. Uh, when you find half the probes, you will unlock a personal space trait called Rapid Support. This will reduce the cooldown of your, uh, of your fleet abilities. So that's Tactical Fleet for Tactical Officers, Engineering Fleet for Engineering Officers, and Science Fleet for Science Officers. Now, this is hardly a crazy meta trait. It's far from it. But again, if you're on a free to play build, you know, any free traits you can get your hands on are always helpful to, ha uh, to have. And if you're a tactical officer, especially uh, tactical fleet is provide some really nice buffs. So that's going to be nice to have. It's going to be less valuable on an engineer. But, you know, that's that is the curse of being an engineer. We always get the crap. But yeah, you get that personal trait when you find half the temporal probes. When you find all of them, you will get an advanced version of the same trait, which means it'll just lower the cooldown even further. Okay, next up we'll do Delta Recruit. Uh, first off of what I would call the must have out of this is going to be from the Admiralty. When you reach level 10 in your faction's Admiralty campaign, so since this is a Klingon tune, once I reached uh, level 10 in the Klingon campaign, uh, I would get this reward. Not like the Admiralty rewards from the Temporal Recruitment event. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of fluff in here. So some single use uh, Admiralty cards, uh, some past tokens. But the thing to get out of this is a permanent USS Voyager Admiralty card. Now, this thing is very useful for actually completing your Admiralty. It has very powerful stats, so this is going to be really helpful for completing those higher level Admiralty missions. You know, that, the ones that really reward a lot of XP or give some really good rewards. This is going to be really nice to have. It's permanent, so you're always going to have it. It doesn't re it doesn't reward a tier 6 ship. I know some people always think, oh, there's an Admiralty card. There must be a ship attached to it. There is no ship attached, attached to it. It's just the card. In fact, most of these uh, epic legendary tokens are like that. You know, when, when they're at gold quality, they are just the card. They're not, they're, there's no ship attached to them because these are these are unique. They have unique names and uni unique abilities and unique stats. Okay, next is just going to be doing the story arcs. Uh, for the Delta Recruit missions, that's going to be uh, from your start from your starting arc. In this case, that's going to be the Klingon Empire uh, arc, which be that's because I'm a Klingon. It's going to be different for each faction, but uh, you play from your starting arc all the way through the Iconian War, and you will get improved Temporal Insight, which again, that is another free starship trait. Again, not really a uh, super great Starship trait, but if you're on a free to play character, you don't want to be spending any money on the game. Again, a free trait's a free trait, so there you go. Completing half the missions will reward you the standard version of Temporal Insight, but completing all of them will reward you the improved version of Temporal Insight. Additionally, the final reward will also give you an account unlock of a Photonic Engineering Bridge Officer. Now, honestly, there's nothing particularly interesting about this bridge officer. The only thing that's interesting about him is that he is a hologram, so he has the photonic trait, but that's it. Also, he's fully customizable, so unlike most hologram bridge officers, you will be able to completely customize him uh, like he were an alien character. But yeah, nothing super special about the bridge officer other than uh, it's a free buff. And lastly comes from these collection missions. Uh, throughout the missions, you will be able to collect Iconian information and Iconian technology. They're like the, the probes in uh, the Temple Recruitment event. They're in the listed missions and you just gotta find the glowy thing and click on it. If you collect all of the Iconian technology, you will obtain the Temporal Negotiator. This is a really nice ship device. Using it will reduce the cooldown of all your bridge officer abilities by 50%. It's got a long cooldown, but yeah, this can be pretty nice when you're in a pinch and you really want to get all your abilities out just all at once. Even if you're already using, you know, proper cooldown methods, this can still be pretty nice to have. Now you can see it says eight through 10, but it also says I've claimed it. That's because uh, I completed the D uh, Delta Recruit event on like when it first went live, you know, way back in the day. But uh, the Delta Recruit event has since been upgraded uh, and updated for, for, you know, to be up to date with the uh, the current state of the game and so they can just put them out uh, yearly like they do these days and I, I haven't gone through and gotten these uh, these last four I need to do that eventually just for the sake of getting them 
but yeah, even though the uh, the event was updated and, you know, I technically don't have all the rewards, I had already earned it, so that's that's why I, I've got it here. Same with the, the next one, which is the ground device you get from getting all the Iconian information, and that is the Paradox Corrector. This one is a ground device. Uh, when you have been defeated, you can uh, restore up to 50% of your health and you can resurrect defeated allies and it can be activated while you've been defeated. So even if your character is lying there unconscious, you can still activate this device, not even have to use a revive or wait for someone to revive you. You can just activate this, it will resurrect you and all of your um, all of your allies. So if you're on a TFO, uh, it will revive any other um, allied players that have been uh, knocked out, or it will revive your bridge officers if you're playing solo. This can be a very useful device if you're not running with the best ground build and you struggle with survivability. You know, if you want a way to quickly resurrect yourself, this is a way to do it. Though, like with the, uh, the previous device, this is also going to have a very long cooldown, so you're not going to be able to spam it repeatedly. Moving on to the Gamma Recruits. First is the Specializations. When you spend 45 points on your Specializations, and that's any of the Specializations. Can be Command, Commando, Constable, Intel, Miracle Worker, Pilot, Strategist, or Temporal Operative. Any of them, you will get some more improved versions of certain traits. In this case, Demolition Team, Unconventional Tactics, and Arrest. Now, like before, some of these specialization starship traits, they're not the best. But again, if you are on a free to play build, uh, you, you're going to want all the traits that you can get. And if you can improve those traits, all the better. Next is from the R&D section. If you get any one of your R&D schools up to level 15 on your Jem'Hadar recruit, you will get a purple level version of an Aegis R&D specialist duty officer. Meaning, So remember that uh, blue Aegis duty officer I talked about earlier? Now you can get a purple one, too. Though this one is going to take much longer to get because this one you have to get uh, any one of your schools up to level 15. OK, next up, we got more Admiralty stuff with here with this one. If you get any three of your Admiralty campaigns on your Gemini recruit up to level 10, you will be rewarded with a lot of the usual fluff that the other duty or that the other Admiralty stuff rewards. So single use Admiralty cards, uh, pass tokens, a little bit of dilithium, but you will also get a uh, Admiralty card for Odo's flagship. Again, this is just an Admiralty card, so there is no actual tier 6 ship tied to it uh, with the reward. But again, this is going to be really useful for getting your Admiralty done, especially since it is uh, another thing that you can claim on other characters. So this is going to be helpful across your whole uh, account, you know, depending on how much you do Admiralty. Next up is in the Reputations, and this is just like in the Temporal Recruit event. You get any one of the Reputations up to Tier 6, and you will get a free Tier 6 X token. Again, just like before, this won't be an account unlock, but Tier 6 tokens do have an account-wide effect, so it's kind of the same difference. Now, the last thing from the Gamma Recruitment event that I would call a must-have reward is from the Duty Officer ac uh, Accommodation section. Uh, this is kind of, again, kind of like with the Temporal Recruitment section. If you get any six of your Duty Officer tracks up to level four, you will be rewarded with a unique uh, Duty Officer. This one, however, is way more valuable. This will reward you with Elder Malakatan. This is one of the most valuable ground duty officers in the game. And that's because he will give you a damage buff that applies to both ground and space. There aren't a lot of duty officers that will have an effect on your space stats as well as your ground stats. There are there are a number of them, but they work much like this one where they will just give you a uh, straight up damage buff to both ground and space for whatever reason. But the others, which are usually like a uh, space warfare specialist or ground warfare specialist, those will usually only apply uh, to a certain faction. So like they'll give you a small amount of uh, damage against the Borg or the Tholians or the Romulans or whatever. Elder Malakatan will give you a straight up uh, damage buff no matter what enemies you're fighting. So it doesn't matter who you're fighting, you always get a 10% damage buff on space and ground. This is really valuable because, I mean, yeah, it's not a very high damage buff, but it's one that you're not going to get from anywhere else out of your ground duty officers. So, you know, you either have this or you just don't have that 10% buff. And now moving on to the last of the recruitment events, the KDF recruitment event. Uh, the first reward to go over is something you actually don't actually need to do anything for besides just play through the tutorial. And that is the Batleth of Stovokor. This is a very powerful melee weapon, largely because of the additional buffs that you can add onto it as you level up through the Warrior's Blood uh, rewards. 
most of these missions will reward some sort of buff that can be added on to the Batleth of Stovokor. It's either some sort of damage buff or some other uh, additional effect, like uh, at some point it increases uh, more physical damage, uh, you can recover some health uh, against enemies, and you can get bonus damage against enemies with low health. You'll acquire these as you get through these various uh, challenges. Once you get to 1,000 melee kills, you will not only max out uh, what you can do with this Batleth, but you'll also make the Batleth an account unlock reward, so you'll be able to claim this on any character. Now, while going through this track, you'll also uh, gain access to a new personal trait called Warrior's Blood, which will increase your melee damage even further. So if you're wanting to have more fun with this Batleth, which this uh, Batleth really kind of changed melee combat for me. This was just so much fun to have fun with. But yeah, if you like melee combat, you're definitely going to want this personal trait. And once you get to 2500 melee kills, you will get the improved version of that personal trait which actually we can look at that right over here. Yeah, there you go. Melee kills grant a stacking bonus uh, to crit chance, but uh, up to 5% and, and a 10% bonus to crit severity while the bonus is maximized, uh, maximized. Stacks fall off after 60 seconds. So yeah, crit chance and crit severity while using a melee weapon. Now, 2,500 kills, that is a lot of kills. That is going to take you a while just playing through the game. But there is a way to kind of optimize your way to get that many kills. And it comes from the episode Partisans. Uh, this is in the Klingon Civil War arc. Uh, yeah, right here, the third mission. Uh, there is a part in this mission where uh, you are transported into an arena where you have to fight a bunch of creature enemies, you know, you know, the giant scorpion things, Mogatu, Targ, stuff like that. And uh, this is a really great opportunity to stack up those kills because uh, to get out of that area, you've got to like activate these consoles that are all around the arena so you can get out of there. But if you don't activate those consoles, the enemies will just keep spawning. So it's a really great way to farm these melee kills. So you go in equipped with your Batleth, equip all of your uh, bridge officers also with Batleths because their kills count toward your kill count. So for every bridge officer that you have that gets a melee kill will count toward this as well. In fact, I'm pretty sure it even counts uh, Martok's kills as well because he'll be with you on that mission. And because he's basically a pet following you around, yeah, his kills will count toward you too. And for the most part, uh, and for the most part throughout that mission, he uses a Batleth. So yeah, just grind through partisans. And yeah, that should be a good way to farm these kills. Now, it's still going to take you a while, but it's a great way to just get those done in a day. OK, next up is the Hunter's Instinct Rewards. This one requires you to get ambush kills. Now, an ambush kill is something you're going to be getting in space, and it's also going to require that you have a cloaking device. When you drop out of a cloak, you get a, uh, a buff that is called ambush that will last for a few seconds and will increase the amount of damage you do to your enemy targets. So in order to uh, gain points for these rewards, you will have to uh, get kills while this ambush buff is still active. Fortunately, there are ways to uh, increase the duration of that ambush buff. We'll get into that in a bit. Now, after you get that first kill, you will get the Starship Trait Hunter's Instinct, and this is going to make it a bit easier to get those ambush kills. With improved Hunter's Instinct uh, equipped, uh, ambush will also apply an additional damage resistance debuff to your enemies, making them easier to kill. It'll also add a placate effect whenever you recloak, so enemies will be less likely to be able to target you even after you've cloaked. Now, once you get to 50 kills, you'll unlock a reward that is a special Klingon bridge officer. This bridge officer will have the space trait superior infiltrator, and this will increase the duration of your ambush buff, meaning you'll have more time to get those ambush kills. Okay, these two are just more marks, but when you get to 1000, that's when you get the improved version of Hunter's Instinct. And when you get to 2500, you get a special duty officer, which uh, this will increase your crit chance uh, whenever you fire your energy weapons. Sadly, while this is a very good bridge officer, uh, annoyingly, this one will not be an account unlock. You will only have access to this bridge officer on your KDF recruit. But if you plan to keep using your KDF recruit, even after you finish the recruitment event stuff, it's going to be a good duty officer to keep. Now, there really aren't any tricks to get these ambush kills like there is with the melee kills. Uh, with this one, I would just go into some patrols uh, and get as many kills as I can. You know, something like ninth rule or something like that, like that. And, you know, be sure to remember to use your cloaking device in between waves. Though at the same time, you'll also want to make sure you're using a build that's designed to hit multiples and multiple enemies at once, something like Scatter Volley or Fire at Will. And uh, I'll have more info on that in a bit once we get to uh, further into these rewards. 
Okay, next up is the Unforgettable Rewards. Now, this one requires you to actually do your endeavors while on this character. That, is, that character being your KDF recruit. Uh, you level these up and you will gain uh, several bonuses to uh, how much progress uh, you can make with your Endeavor XP. The first three will only apply to your KDF recruit on its own, but once you get through the latter three, those will apply to your whole account. So if you're wanting to speed up your progress in your Endeavor grind, uh, you're definitely going to want to complete these rewards. Next up is one of the Slay Enemies of the Empire rewards. Most of these just reward gear or energy credits or something to that effect, except for this second one. This one actually rewards a tier 6 ship. Wait, after you find and eliminate uh, an enemy called Yuljin, I think that's how you pronounce that, U-L-J-U-N, uh, you can find him in the episode Bringing Down the House which that's a pretty early mission. It's like the first mission and yeah, the first mission in the second arc. Yeah, after you kill him, you'll be able to claim the uh, tier six Bird of Prey. This is the uh, the refit version of the Imchala. Now, this is a uh, kind of a unique ship because it's very bare bones. It's it is scaling. So you, no matter what level you're at, you'll still be able to use this t uh, ship, even though it is tier six. But despite being a tier six ship, uh, it's actually the only T6 ship that doesn't have any specialization seating. So really, it's more accurate to say that it's basically more of a tier five U ship. Just, you know, it hasn't been upgraded. I mean, for a free ship, that's not bad. But yeah, this is definitely meant to be sort of a, uh, a starter ship, not something you want to stick around with. Though one of the upsides to this ship that uh, it comes with the starship trait Withering Barrage. Withering Barrage extends the duration of Cannon Scatter Volley. Now, remember what I was saying earlier about wanting a, uh, a build that deals uh, damage to multiple enemies uh, if you're wanting to get those ambush kills more easily. Withering Barrage is going to help you a lot with that. So with Withering Barrage, you'll be able to set up a proper Cannon Scatter Volley build by being able to extend the duration of Cannon Scatter Volley as long as you can. And then you can just go in and out of Cloak to get those ambush kills on, you know, small mobs of groups. Uh, so instead of getting them one at a time, you'll be able to get them, you know, probably three or four at a time. So yeah, not a great ship, but uh, definitely comes with a valuable Starship trait. That said, it is also worth noting that Withering Barrage comes on like six other ships. Uh, they're all Sea Store ships, and three of those are the legendary counterparts to those ships. But yeah, free Starship trait on a free ship. It's not a bad deal, especially considering you only have to kill one guy to get it. OK, next up is another duty officer. Uh, you to get this, all you have to do is get to level four in the Marauder track in your duty officers. Uh, get this, you'll get uh, some other stuff, but you'll also get a unique duty officer, Adet Pa. Now, unique should probably be in quotation marks because uh, she's not really that unique. The duty officer has a unique portrait and a unique name, but honestly, the actual abilities and traits on this uh, duty officer, not remarkable at all. All it does is it's a projectile officer or that it increases the duration of tactical team. And tactical team is not something you should be using because tactical team has a chance to interrupt firing cycles, and that makes all of the team abilities, because they all do this, all the team abilities worthless because you do not want to interrupt your firing cycle. Now, if they ever fix that, then yeah, the team abilities would be, you know, they're they won't be useless anymore. But yeah, not not something I would be excited to have. Uh, the upside is that one, this is an account unlock, so you'll be able to claim it on any character. And two, it is still a very rare uh, duty officer. So if you're still working on duty officer missions, you know, leveling up uh, the different tracks, still be useful to have just for uh, for the sake of grinding your duty officers. And lastly is completing all of the story missions. So for this one, you'll have to go all the way from the first arc to the uh, play of the Klingon Civil War arc. So this one's going to take you a little while because that's that's a lot of missions in between there. But completing them, you will get a special universal kit module, the piezo electric execution uh, scepter. I think that's what it, how it's pronounced. Is it scepter or sceptre? Probably scepter. <laughs> Y'all probably gonna give me a lot of crap for not knowing how to pronounce this, aren't you? <laughs> anyway, honestly, it's not the most powerful uh, kit module there's ever been, but it's not a bad one and it's a free one you get through progressing through these rewards. So it's worth picking up, especially if you're on a free to play build. So yeah, those are what I think are the must have rewards out of the recruitment events. Now, obviously, you're going to want to get all of them eventually because those are some very valuable rewards. I mean, uh, you know, not doing them, you're basically just leaving free marks or EC or even dilithium on the table. So you may as well just go through the effort of getting all of them, because that way you can claim those on all of your characters. But the goal of this video was to just kind of give you an idea of where to focus your efforts of, uh, initially. 
Let me know if you guys think I missed anything down below in the comments, or just let me know like what your favorite recruitment event is or what do you think has the best rewards. Uh, I'd be interested to hear those opinions. Uh, while you're down there, be sure to hit like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit the join button to become a member or the super thanks button or find the link to the merch store in the video description. Uh, if you're ever shopping on the Epic Game Store, don't forget to use my creator code STU1701. Either way, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu and I will see you guys next time.